Hello and welcome to another Dr. Spotfire quickly video. My name is Jose Leveguirre from Spotfire and today I'm going to show you how the coordinate system transformation for image layers in Spotfire maps work. In other words, how to use the Spotfire map visualization image layer. So you can use your own images to plot your data on top of it. Think of it of a scatter plot with an image background and that image background is your template. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here's a real use case where oil and gas professionals use this approach to find oil from rock samples. They use a cavern line diagram, which is a graphical representation used in, uh, used in uh, geochemistry and petrology to classify organic matter and ketogen. Ketogen is a type of organic matter found in sedimentary rocks, and based on their hydrogen and oxygen content, they can identify the type of organic matter, determine, determine its maturity, and assess its potential to produce oil or gas. So here I have the data with uh, some of the, the oil index, hydrogen index, uh, my Tmax, temperature max, and some other data. So here I have the, the a map layer, my, my image template. These, uh, these lines don't change, uh, but these markers, I can plot them from my data table on top of it. A uh, similar way, we'll, we'll, we'll be using a sky tool. Here, here I have a better example where I have a different template but I have these reference lines. I have I can put those reference lines in my scatter plot, but I cannot put additional information that an image will bring me. So let's go and add my map chart. Here we go. And I'm going to remove the unnecessary layers that I don't need. I'm going to remove this uh, TMS layer and map layer, and I'm going to add an image layer. Instead, the image layer is going to be this template, um, and it's asking me if I want to remove the reference system, I want to say yes, because the coordinate system, it's, it doesn't make sense. I have an image and the coordinate system, it's in pixels. So my image in this case is uh, 570 by 448. And the next step is to go to my other marker layer, go to the settings and configure how it's going to map those, uh, those uh, columns that has that pixel position for each of the values. Right now, I don't have them. I have to. I have to compute them. And as I said, you can you can uh, create a calculated value or a transformation. But in this case, I'm going to use I'm going to use a data function. The data function is here in this article. It explains you. You can download the templates. It's, it explains you step by step how it works, how the calculation works. If you want to create the calculated values, here is here are the formulas. But I'm going to use these data function that I, I already downloaded. So let's use that and add the columns. And I'm going to use the data function. We'll do, use the data function. It's going to ask me for some parameters. The ID is going to just, uh, it's an optional parameter if you want to include that column uh, in your output. Uh, the X is going to be the oil index. Y is my hydrogen index. That's a column that I need for. And my minimum X is basically the scale range. So it goes from zero, uh, from zero, zero to 100 on my oxygen and 1000 from my hydrogen on the Y axis. And the latitude and longitude, my minimum is zero comma zero. I'm gonna put just that as a placeholder. I'm gonna change that in a minute. I'm gonna explain you why. And the maximum also gonna be a placeholder. And now I click okay. And it's going to ask me if uh, there's a, some cyclic, depend the cyclic dependency. It's okay. I'm using the same data table to add those columns. Just ignore that for now. And now you can see that it's adding those columns. Because this is a placeholder, and uh, now it's, it's, uh, it's going to show as zeros. So let me go, let me configure the, now that I have those columns, let me configure those columns on my, on my uh, marker layer. So go to settings, go to positioning, and now I can use my latitude uh, actually longitude with no aggregation, that's fine. And my latitude, no aggregation, and we're done with that. Perfect, so I should see at this point all those data points here on the corner. But notice that my zero, zero lat long is, is right here. So I can right click on this, you know, on, on this corner and I can copy the coordinates for my minimum lat long. Then I go to my, um, I'm gonna show the legend on my data table. And uh, if, I, if I choose the data table, I can see this FX. That means that this data table, it has a function component that I added to all those columns. 
and I have access to those parameters right away. So my minimum lat long, the corresponding to zero, 00 is this, and I click OK, and then the, the other point is right here. I'm going to zoom a little because it's um, uh, just to have access to this point. I'm going to right click and copy the coordinates, and now I'm going to paste them here, click OK, and now you can see, if I refresh, that the the points are now in the proper place. Uh, I don't need any size, but I'm gonna remove that. But one way to uh, maybe check these, uh, these values is that you can change, uh, uh, maybe if, uh, I'm gonna change this point to zero, zero, just to make sure that it goes to this, this place. So I can go to my own index is zero. Uh, I have to just uh, define what the ID is so it, it can only change that one value and the same for this one. And now you can see that the data point, um, you have to refresh, there you go. Now the, the data point is uh, it's right here. If I want it in the middle, I can just do the same and that's why I can, I can uh, calibrate or validate all of the data points or just by looking at the, the position where they are landed. Thank you and that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next Dr. Spotfire quick tip video.